Hey everyone, it's Jay from Sword to Plow. Head to the farm tomorrow, but today I took delivery of brand new BCS. Oh, oh, oh. Also, what this BCS has is a attachment. So this is the chipper, and then the top is the shredder. BCS 749 with an electric start. Got the quad flail mower for the BCS. So, super excited to record the trip tomorrow. First time showing everybody the farm. Also in this video, I'm gonna show the um, all the instructions that the sales rep, Mr. Dave Paulus gave. Shout out to Dave, super awesome. Let me borrow the flail mower until my back ordered one gets here. Um, yeah, so that's about it. We're working with it. This carburetor has got two levers on it. You'll see a black lever down here at the bottom. Now this is all in the book too, by the way. So uh, I will show you in the book where all this is at. The lever is over here. That's shutting the fuel off. This is very important when you transport any piece of power equipment like this because the carburetors tend to throw fuel into the cylinder and you get it somewhere and you pull it over and it's locked, it's liquid locked. So you gotta take the spark plug out, you gotta spin it over, and if you ever have that happen, flip this little cutoff up here so you won't have a spark and pull the rope and get the fuel out of it. And of course you can call me and I'll walk you back through this again. I can do this over the phone. You know, I can tell you, you see the handle with the rope on it? Sure. Okay, take the spark plug out over here. Do you have sockets and stuff like that, tools, uh, 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 mechanics tools and whatnot? Sure. Yeah, okay, good. Another thing about the BCS, BCS did their metric very smart. Everything corresponds to a domestic or a metric, every bolt on here. In other words, uh, like there's an 11 millimeter up here, and that'll be 7 sixteenths. There's a 13 millimeter right here, that'll be a half inch. So if you've got similar wrenches, and I brought a few wrenches with me to, for you to take, uh, they don't send enough wrenches with the machine, they send a few wrenches, but not enough. But this needs to be cut off. So if I was to forget about this right now and start spinning it, okay, the, the engine. If it hadn't started by then, something's wrong. Well, the first thing, this is off up there. Plus, I didn't turn the fuel on. Plus, I didn't choke it. The gray knob up here is the choke. Here's the icons for the gas pump and the choke. Now, this will always start with the rope. You could take the battery completely out of it. It will still start and run and do fine with a, a pull start. All right, now. I should be able to hit that key switch and it should fire off with just in two or three rounds. That's what every time. If you crank it more than that, something's wrong. You've got something out of whack somewhere. Here, I'm pulling it up to third gear here, down here in the gear selector position. You'll see it doesn't want to go well it did after I pulled it a little bit. But if it does, then I'll show you how to hold a little pressure on this. Push down on your red handle and let out on your clutch a little bit and pop it. I remember that from last time. Good. Perfect. Yeah, that's going to be a common occurrence, especially for first gear. Usually it doesn't do it in third gear. Now this thing will jump back pretty fast in third. So it's probably a good idea to use it in first until you get real familiar with all the controls and whatnot.
just going to go over the controls. I think I'm just going to start on the tractor and go around the tractor, and then we'll look at the shredder and so forth and so on as we, go, right. as we go on, and I'll show you what everything does or doesn't do, and uh, that'll be, you know, uh, what we uh, what we want to do. And if you're recording it, that's fine because you can come back to it and, yeah. and be good. Yeah. Okay. You don't mind being on camera, do you? No, I'm fine with that. Okay. I, I ended up years ago on TV in Charlotte, so... Uh, this right here is a brake. Now, it locks one wheel. It depends on which position you've got the handlebars in as to which wheel it's going to lock. In this case, set up like this, it locks that wheel down over there so you turn to the left. You'd think the right handle would make it turn to the right. It does if the handlebars are in the other position. But in the mow mode, and you're going to be in the mow mode, you don't have any tillage equipment, so you're not going to be in the tillage in the tillage mode. You're always going to be in this mode, so you'll get used to it. This one over here is the same brake, is an individual brake for that wheel there, so you can turn to the right, but you're operating the right turn with your left hand. It's a little bit backwards, but it's because these handlebars turn around. Got it. Okay. Now. If you want to put both of them on, and this is going to be very handy when you start swapping equipment. This is a parking brake, which puts both brakes on. Now, if you want to get up and wiggle this to get it off or something like that, you can do that, or you can hold this in place while you shove the mower on. I'll show you a little, a few little tricks about doing that, too. So, that's the brakes. Okay. Okay. If we go next, I suppose, is the handlebars. This is a release down here, which allows the handlebars to be moved from side to side like this. Now, if you, if you had a mower on and you came over here and there's a bunch of bushes hanging out, I sort of showed you that back there. Yeah, I you remember. You can put it over here and you can work it like that. Now, if you're going all the way around, in other words, if you're going to change out attachments, and again, you won't be doing much of this all the way around, but the carburetor and the muffler are over here and you go always towards the carburetor and the muffler regardless of what position you're in if your handlebars were pointing that way you would come back around this way okay always go toward these two black boxes over here when you move your handlebars now one thing I would suggest if you're going to take your handlebars completely around this hood pops off it's got three little pins that hold it in in the beginning I would suggest you take the hood off and watch your cables here to be sure that they don't get in a bind when you swing the handlebars around. If you see them getting wrapped up here on something, just take it off. They're meant to go all the way around, but sometimes they get a little bit hung on something and uh, that kind of stuff there. All right, let's go back over here now. We talked about handlebars and whatnot. This is a throttle. This is wide open up here straight up. This is down. This is idle. It's simple as that. Okay. Okay. This is a differential lock. What it does right now, it has a standard type differential in it, just like your car does, where one wheel can go faster on the outside of a turn. It can do that. But if you need extra traction or extra pull, and you might in heavy stuff with the mower, you can pull back on this and it'll lock both wheels together. But you'll know you're in that when you get ready to turn because the machine will fight you. You'll, you'll feel it fight you, and it won't, it won't allow you to turn easily without flipping it back like that. And on a new machine, if you're coming up on something, you probably need to flip it down. If your turn is that second slat across the concrete there, the, second, the next block up, put it down here so that you have enough space for it to get itself. After you run it a while, you'll be able to flip it down much, much sooner than that. Okay, this thing has three gears. First, second, third. Now it's in third. All you have to do is push this handle down and it'll go into second. Turn it. You got to turn it a little bit sideways. See to miss the, de the detents. It's in second. Now it's going to go down into first. And I'm not sure it's going all the way into first. No, it's not. So I'd have to have it running and I show you how to put a little pressure on it, whatnot, if it go into first. That's the one that's usually cranked down there. That and PTO. But it usually just goes right on in like this. So 
that's what you do. If you need to get these rods out <clears throat> to move the handlebars for any reason, lift this little clip, push them out. They're friction locks. They finally improved this. They used to just be friction locks. And after they got worn, you just touch them and they'd fall out. Mm. Not so good. Okay. So we've, we've, got the, we've got the brake. We've got the twist in the handlebars. We've got the differential lock. This is a forward and reverse lever, okay? This works in conjunction with your clutch over here. What you need to do is pull the clutch up, get your operator presence, which is the red handle, get it down, and then shift this from forward to reverse. Now it's backwards because the handlebars are turned around. So it can, just one of those things, you'll get used to it. But this is for the tiller. This would make it go forward. This is gonna make it go backwards in this position. This is going to make it go forwards in this position. And there's a neutral position right there. So that would essentially make it forward. So technically the, the engine is the front of the tractor. Well, <laughs> depends on uh, whether you have a tiller on or whether you have a mower on. If you have a mower on, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you could say that. We call it the mow mode and the till mode okay you're in the mow mode now you would be in the till mode if you put a tiller on and came around here and operated from that end up there yeah it's real simple once you get used to it it sounds confusing but it's real simple once you, once you get the hang of it and uh and whatnot it gives you basically three speeds and you've got both in forward and reverse the same three speeds with that lever right there what it seems like to me is that this, the tractor, is going to uh, go in the direction of, of this lever. Okay, now it should go backwards, shouldn't it? Right now. Right, is this, is this going to go forward or back if you start it? If I start it up right now, it's, it's going to go forward. It's going to go when forward. When I put it up here, it's going to go backwards. But now, as soon as you turn the handlebars around, it's exactly opposite. You'll, you'll feel it. It's so if you turn the handlebars around, it's going to go this way, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah that, okay. So that makes sense. The, the gas tank and the engine is the front, okay. the front of the tractor. Okay. So okay. if this is yeah. forward, you're going forward. If this is back, you're essentially, yeah, you're reversing towards the yeah, back okay. of the tractor. That, that's not a bad explanation either but it's going to come it's going to become so intuitive that you don't even think of it yeah really it is okay so you've got your three speeds here so oh we got the, we covered the throttle this is to raise and lower your handlebars you'll find when you start turning the handlebars around and whatnot you need to, it's this handle right here you just push down on it and you push up on your handlebars like this and you get them into a position, there's detent positions in there where they go into detent. And, you know, whatever's comfortable for you. There's no right or wrong for this. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Okay. Okay. This is the PTO lever. This puts the implement in gear. Okay. This, this will put the chipper shredder right now in gear if I pull back on it. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to discuss that at length with you and whatnot because you're going to be using that a lot. This will put the mower in gear. Got it. Same thing. Okay. Now okay. One. So you're, so when you move that back towards you. Yes. See the little red doodad down yeah. there on the end of, yeah. middle of that rod? See that little roller? Next to it, the little black roller back towards me from it? Uh-huh. Okay. What that's designed to do is when you have the handlebars in the other position, the, the till position, uh -huh. that keeps you from tilling your toes. In other words, if you put it in reverse, it won't back up with the with the machine. Ah, uh, okay. Because that cam will take it out of gear, will take the PTO out of gear. Uh, it's hard to demonstrate it with this thing on because you can't work your handlebars off of it. You know, you can't get your handlebars back there and show you how to do that. When you get the mower on there, if you want me to, I'll come down. I still want to come down to six mile when you're down there <laughs> time and see, because I don't think it'll take me too much longer to get down there than it does here, going around 85 to Greenville. I think I can get to Greenville in two hours. 
Oh, well, it's yeah, it's it's a half hour past six miles. So oh, it's a half hour past six miles. Yeah. So it's three hours. In. It's okay. it's a solid three from here. Gotcha. Okay. So it it'll be a I w I would imagine when I when I googled the directions, it's a solid three from from your house too. Ah, uh, gotcha. Because it was a four. It was four from my house to your place, then to the farm. So I got you. Okay. Okay, fair enough. But I still want to come down. Yeah. And once you get going down there and whatnot, I will make a date and get some good weather and I'll come down. But, <clears throat> okay, so that puts the implement in, into gear. This is the parking brake we talked about earlier. This is the on-off up at this end. Now, when you get it turned around, this is not up by the handlebar, so you couldn't just reach down here and cut the switch off. You'd have to walk around the machine. Right. in order to do it so that's what this does and it's very easy to have that in that position don't ask me how i know that i just did it out there okay yeah. and it won't start don't crank it don't grind it if it doesn't hit right off look to see do you do you need to choke do you need this you know whatever so yes but that'll keep it from starting right now i don't know what they got these other positions in here for because it doesn't have an intermediate it it goes there or there all right this is the clutch right here this has resistance to it when the clutch is engaged. When it's down like this, the clutch is engaged, and any machine that was engaged down there as well is going to operate. But this is cutting off the hydraulic flow to the hydraulic clutch assembly down there. That's what they're really doing. So you have to pull up on this and then push down on that. Don't force this, you'll break something. I mean, you can get, you know, if you get help down there working. Be sure they understand this, because this is the first thing that they're going to break right here, I guarantee you. I just had to take one of these down to a guy down right outside of Columbia over here on... on. Uh, so all these parts won't come to, like, me in the mail. They'll have to be shipped to you first? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. You won't need any parts. If, if you're careful with it, BCS lady called me up and said that I have parts. But my point is, is that if I, if for some if reason that up. broke off, oh no, I like have I'm some, not just I, getting that off Amazon though. I have, I have stock of this stuff. Some of it that I know is going to give. Trouble. Well, I know you do, but I'm yeah. saying that it's not a part that I can just order off Amazon. You know, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I'd have to find out. I'd have to try it. I've never tried it. That's a good question. And I probably need to try it. But, uh, I try to, uh, Clinton. If your, if your tractor ever goes down for any reason that's going to be tied up for a while, I'll give you a loaner to use if I've got the right attachments. And in every case, I'm going to have the right attachments because I've got a shipper shredder in this order. This is the third one lately I've had, so I decided I better get one for stock. So this right now will not allow the tractor or the implement to run, but it'll allow the engine to run if I hold it like this. If I let it out like this, something's going to start moving if it's engaged. You know, if it's all in neutral down there, nothing's going to happen. I can put it in neutral up here, right there, and nothing will happen. Uh huh. But uh, that can stop it. Anytime you want to, just let that up, just like that, and you're fine. Good. You won't hurt a thing. Just remember when you go back down, don't force this. Okay. So in this case, the, the PTO is not engaged. No, the PTO, okay. If you want to, we don't want to grind up your hood, so let me, let me have your hood here. Kind of a bad place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, if you were going to grind limbs, you don't want the tractor to move, do you? Right. So, ideally, no. <laughs> yeah, ideally, no. <laughs> neutral here. Alright? Now, I'm going to put the PTO in here, down here. Alright, it's in. Now, there's enough of an inertia situation that I don't know if I can start it that slow or not. I usually try to get enough of it. Now, one thing you want to watch. I put those seals, white marks on that pulley down there. Those are to tell you from back here that pulley is turning or not. Got it. If you were working this machine and say it got stopped up and you weren't sure if you had it cleared out, when you let this out, you see it start turning. Okay? 
they, they have a cover for that, and I took it off, and I'm going to give it to you. But while you're learning, you can burn those belts off of there. I mean, it'll smoke those belts in a skinny minute, and you're not even know it. So, now, if I up this, it's going to stop. See, the tractor's not moving now. And I'll go through the toolbox eventually and show you everything about the toolbox. Now, this rope, to me, is a rinky-dink contraption that the lawyers at BCS came up with, okay? Got it. Okay, but I give it to you because it comes with it. All right, here's what we do. All right, now I'm going to pull up on the clutch, down on the operator presence. I'm going to slide this on. I'm gonna let the clutch out and I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the machine turning. I see that thing start turning. You see how it blows it down if you're not careful. It's supposed to run wide open. Remember to raise your stabilizer stands. Stabilizer stands up front here. Don't bend those.
will probably, that viney thing will probably go through the, through the shredder. Now there, you just about hit your limit. If you see the reaction, you are just about as big as you want there. That big one will go in there when when you start it, I'm pretty sure. makes excellent mulch for your fruit trees. That's the plan. Yeah. here where my finger is mm -hmm. if I take this and that's where I use that 10 millimeter right there and right there and this is uh, 19 or three quarters well I could take this this is called a tang and I could take this tang off and I could take that and put it on bolts on your tractor directly with bolts that's what they've come up with this quick hitch thing to slide it in and out well um, this is what we call a tang now there's a mating part that's on your tractor. In other words, if so it didn't this have, is not a quick hitch. This is a quick hitch. This is. This yeah, is. This. Yeah. This and that make a quick hitch. There's two parts, okay. and you you need one of these on every attachment, but you only need one of those on the tractor. Mm -hmm. That's the little red lever handle. Yeah. The thing that's 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 the bushing. This is the tang. I don't know why they call them this, but uh, that's that's the way it works. There's no nothing you need to worry about as far as grinding or scratching or it seems pretty tough down it's there very tough everywhere you go i mean you've seen me use a hammer and a ch chisel and a pry bar i mean a screwdriver and a pry bar on it. it it's practically bulletproof i mean it's so heavy cast and and you just don't have any trouble with it yeah hi okay good same way with the tractor now i want to go over the tractor with you for just a minute on the oil level check there's two all level plugs for the engine. And they're both back here on each side. This black plug right here. Okay, it unscrews. And what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to hold it in against the threads. And then you want to take it out just a little bit and hopefully, okay. Did you see oil drip out? Oh yeah. If oil drips out, you've got it. If no oil drips out, you add some oil. 
it's got to be level. It's pretty level there. And you've got one on the other side that's the same thing. You can do it over there or over here. Okay. Okay. Now, let's see. Get one of my helpers here. Run over there in that box that's on the trailer and see if there isn't a rag in there, either red rag or blue rag in that in that box. Jack, there's a make rag on the workbench. You can go grab it. A blue rag on the workbench. This is the transmission dipstick right here. Light blue. Light blue. Okay. This this is the transmission dipstick. It's right down there. It fills up that hole that you see in the crankcase. Ah, perfect. Okay. Okay. Oh, it wasn't in there, was it? You didn't find it. Okay, I don't know where it is. I thought I had one in there. This is fine. All right, you wipe it off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm out of focus is what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not a good ham actor here. So you see a little notch right here. What I do is I drop it back in until it hits the O-ring. Okay, I don't push it all the way down. Seat the O-ring. And it should be somewhere between the bottom and the top of that notch when the tractor's leveled. Okay. Okay? And then I push it all the way in so the O-ring sees. And usually what I do, I'll take a finger and I'll wipe a little bit of oil around here to make it slide in and out easy. Now, unless you see a spot under it for some reason, you don't have to check this stuff very often. You don't want you to pop. It's not going to use much oil unless it starts leaking and... If it does, we'll get it fixed. But uh, that is the only other thing that I think that I haven't gone over. There is no filter on the engine. No the oil fil filter. No oil filter. The filter is on the transmission. And it'll tell you when you need to start changing, when you need to change this stuff. Right over here, you'll see this little white filter down there. Now, you can't get that from anywhere but BCS. You may be able to get it online. I gave you the part number. Of that filter. See that white filter now? Mm -hmm. Okay. But there is an American made filter from Wix, but it has the wrong thread. This has a metric thread, ours uh. has a domestic thread. I'm going to get after Wix and see if they'll start making these for us over here so they won't be, you know, we'll have them available through Napa. Okay. Any, I guess, any questions about anything? You've seen pretty much all of it. If the battery ever seems should go dead and it wasn't cranked for whatever reason. Rope start it and let it charge itself back up. Don't try to jump it off. Okay. Because it should rope start. I could take that battery and take it home with me and rope start just like it crank starts. Got it. With one or two pulls and boom. Doesn't even have to have the battery in there. No. Doesn't even need a battery. Got it. And the key can stay switched on. Some of the vendors will tell you, I don't know about your yard tractor, but... They tell you not to leave the key switched on or it'll drain the battery. You don't have to worry about this thing. You can leave the key switched on and it won't drain anything. There's two keys here. What is, what's, uh, what's here in, uh, in non-battery start ones? Oh, there's a little toolbox. Toolbox, okay. Yeah, there's a little, about the size of that battery box. Got it. It's, it's two pieces in the hood. There's a, there's a different hood. And then you have a little cover over that, and you have a cover over the rest of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Got it. But, see, I, I, did I tell you that, that that tractor that he was talking about, I think he was talking about an 853, wasn't he, or an 852, I'm not sure which. Somebody did. And uh, they can't even sell that tractor in Europe anymore. It won't meet the safety standards. This is the only tractor that will meet the safety standards. It means he has God now. Overseas. Hmm. They, sell them, they sell them other tractors over here. Have been for years. Um... Okay. Anything else? All right. Hey, everyone. Just made it. The three and three and change hour, almost three exactly hour drive up to the farm from our house in Camden. Um, let me show you what we're working with here. But uh, yeah, lots of fun work to do. Got the trailer all, got the BCS out here. Um, it's, it's good to be here. I'm going to show you uh, all the stuff that I'm going to be working on today, lots of uh, flail mowing, lots of uh, chipper shreddering to go with the, with the new tools that I just got. So I'm looking forward to having you guys along with the journey. All right, so 
here is the main area that I'm going to be primarily working on today. I got 30 trees from Ison's Nursery in Georgia showing up soon here in the winter time and all this needs to be needs to be cleared out. So this is going to be perfect for the flail mower here. This is the main south side of the farm. But here's what it looks like unfinished. And a lot of the a lot of the work that we're going to do today is going to be chipping and shredding and once I get you can see there's just a ton of sticks and just um, Lots of stuff that can be cleared up. So uh, it goes all the way around, down through here. Um, so lots of lots of interesting, interesting work to do. But this is where primarily upright, right? This this pine tree right here, which will eventually come down. That's going to be this this whole area here is my my task to clean up. So. This whole week I'm going to be working on it and uh, try to post some videos to let you guys see the progress. Alright everyone, I just finished up for the day. Lots of experimentation, I'll say. Lots of work got done. Lots of good work, exactly what I wanted to do. I'll tell you, if you're going to get a BCS, this machine is wonderful. Now I have 20 acres. You can see it, it's all wooded. So uh, the chipper shredder that I have is not exactly the tool to clear 20 acres worth of forest, but for what I'm trying to do, it's, uh, it's perfect. So you can see behind me, all that got done compared to what it was today. So lots of, uh, lots of, good, lots of good work done. Um, I'm excited to come back tomorrow. Unfortunately, the forecast is calling for rain, so we'll just have to see how she goes. But for now, I'm going to try and get out of here before dark and make sure my uh, truck doesn't get stuck. So that's another thing. Uh, if you guys haven't picked up Joel Salatin's book, Poly Polyface Micro, in that book he talks about having a turnaround. And I now understand why, because I had to spend about 15 minutes figuring out how to get my truck out of here, how to get it turned around. Uh, there's a big mud hole over there that I'm reticent to try to get through, maybe maybe tomorrow. But um, anyway, I'm signing off for now. See you guys. All right, everybody, it is the last day for this trip to the farm. I got all the places cleared that I wanted to clear. I got all the trees marked that I wanted to mark, so 28 trees showing up from Isons, mostly apple trees, but I did get a few pecan and nectarine trees. A lot of the time while I was here, it was raining, uh, but that's just how it goes. And as luck would have it, I was planning to throw the drone up and get some footage for today, but I did not bring an SD card, so the drone footage will have to wait. But for now, you can see behind me, see all those orange flags? Those are where the trees will go. Marked them off 30 feet in between each tree, so I hope that's sufficient. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna load up the, uh, load up all my equipment. The BCS performed very well. The flail mower and the chipper shredder perform very well. If you have a lot of work to do, like I do, just lots of big trees and stuff, the chipper shredder is not going to be the tool for the job. It can take one to two inches very well, so clean up around the yard is, gonna, is not going to be a problem. But really anything over than that, out over that, and it's going to it's gonna bog down pretty good. I think the spec on it is four inches. So if you're considering buying that piece of equipment for a large piece of land clearing, I would definitely advise against that. But small sticks, leaves, it, it mulches leaves very finely. It would be perfect for compost. So if, you're, if you have a small vermicompost and you wanna 
shred up a bunch of leaves. I mean, that thing is awesome. You can see here, here's a small example of what the, what the flail mower is gonna do. So well, all those little tiny pieces uh, is what it produces versus over here, this is obviously the patch that has not been flail mowed. And then right here, right? So, I mean, that for ground composting is just amazing. So, overall success. I had intended to get some uh, drone footage while the foliage is still off all the trees, but the trees are going to be here in a couple of weeks, so I can bring the drone back then, make sure I bring an SD card, and get some footage then. But for now, that's it. Signing off.